Welcome to our lecture online. Here they have given us a differential equation which has constant coefficients. It is homogeneous. It is second order. And they've also given us some initial conditions. Therefore, it's called the initial value problem because they've given us the function evaluated at zero and the derivative of the function evaluated at the same time. Let's assume that this represents time. And so we know the function equals 2 at t equals 0 and the derivative of the function equals 7 when t equals 0. So find the solution to this differential equation. We first are going to find the general solution with the constants c1 and c2 and then we'll solve for those constants using those initial values. So we use the characteristic equation and that will look as follows. We have r squared minus r minus 2 equals 0 and we'll solve for the roots in this case. So it looks like we can probably factor this one. So let's try that. We have an r and an r. How about a minus 2 and a plus 1? When you multiply, you get negative 2. When you add, you get negative 1. So that looks like it's correct, which means we have root 1, which is equal to 2, and root 2, which is equal to a negative 1. So the general solution looks as follows. y is equal to c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the negative t. Now, that's the general solution to this differential equation. Now, of course, we want to find the exact solution by finding the values for c1 and c2 using these initial values indicators. So first, we're going to solve for the function when t is equal to 0. So we'll try our first one. So y when t is equal to 0 is equal to 2. Let's plug in zeros and see what we get. So that gives us c1 e to the 0 power plus c2 e to the 0 power. In other words, 2 equals c1 plus c2. That gives us our first equation to try and find the two constants. But we need the second equation. That's why we need a second initial condition. y prime when t is equal to 0 is equal to 7. Now that means we need to find the derivative of this function. So when we take the derivative, y prime, this is equal to c1 e to the 2t times the derivative exponent, which is 2, plus c2 e to the minus t times the derivative of the exponent, which is a minus 1. In other words, y prime is equal to 2 c1 e to the 2t minus c2 e to the minus t. So for now, plug in a t equals 0 value for this, what do we get? So this is equal to 2c1 e to the 0 power minus c2 e to the 0 power. In other words, 7 is equal to 2c1 minus c2. But from this original equation, we can say that c2 is equal to 2 minus c1 by bringing c1 over the other side of the equation, the equal sign, and we can plug that into our second equation. So this becomes 7 is equal to 2c1 minus 2 minus c1, or 7 equals 2c1 minus 2 plus c1. Bringing the 2 across, we get 9 is equal to 3c1, or c1 is equal to 3. Well, if c1 is equal to 3, we can come back up here. c2 is equal to 2 minus 3, or c2 is equal to minus 1. So now we have the two values for our two constants. When we plug those into our equation, our general solution, we can then say that the exact solution, y as a function of time, is equal to c1, which is minus 1 times e to the 2t, and then c2 is 3. Oh, wait a minute. No, nope, that's not correct. c1 is 3. I took the wrong constant. So this is equal to 3 e to the 2t. And then c2 is minus e to the minus t. And that is correct. All right, so there's the exact solution. And that's how we employ those initial conditions to help us find the exact solution, the only unique solution to this differential equation. And that's how it's done.